Our topic for today uh, is mixed numbers and improper fractions. You have already seen improper fractions when we did the um, simple ordering activity. Uh, you saw something like this, where the top number was bigger than the bottom number. That indicated to you that that was more than one whole. Uh, this is a mixed number, which is also more than one whole. Uh, so a mixed number and an improper fraction are just ways to display something that's more than one whole. Uh, and I put my equal sign here because in a little bit we're going to figure out why two and a half is the same as five halves. But think about the key parts to a mixed number when you take a look at it here. A mixed number has a whole number and a fraction. An improper fraction is a fraction where the top number of the numerator is bigger than the bottom number, the denominator. Now, on that first uh, board, I showed you that 2.5 was equal to 5 halves. Uh, now we're going to see why, and I'm going to show you how to change a mixed number to an improper fraction and an improper fraction back to a mixed number, and vice versa. So what I've displayed here is our 2.5. Okay? We know that we should have two holes, which here's one hole, and here's two holes, uh, and then we should have a half, which is right here. Okay? There's one hole, two holes, and there's our half. We know that these pans need to be cut into pieces of two. We're dealing with halves here. Okay? So this number will indicate how many pieces your pan is cut into. So now, my goal to change this from a mixed number to an improper fraction is to ask myself how many halves do I have all together is basically what we're saying here. So if we count up how many halves, okay, this pan right here has two halves. One, two. This pan has two halves. One, two. And then our last pan just has one half filled in. So now my goal is to count up how many halves uh, does two and a half contain two, four, five. My answer here would be five halves. Okay. Next, let's move to this improper fraction. Basically what they're telling me on this improper fraction is uh, I've got five half size pieces. Now, you should know that every two is going to make a whole because it takes two halves to make a whole. One whole in this case is going to look like this. Two halves. That's going to be our one whole here. So what I like to do for these is, uh, I like to draw out five lines representing our five halves. And then what I do is, I circle groups of two because two halves make a whole. Uh, so here, I would have um, one hole right here. Here I would have another hole. That's all the hole numbers that I can make here, okay, because I only have one left over. So my big number on my mixed number is going to be a two. Now, I just have to figure out how many pieces do I have left over. I have one piece left over, which is a half size piece. We're going to keep that bottom number on there. So I just drew five lines to represent my five halves. I circled groups of two because it takes two to make a hole here. Uh, and then I had one left over, which that number goes right here. So this is how two and a half is the same as five halves. I I'm going to keep with the representations here, but I'm going to show you eventually easier ways to do this as well. All right, next one we're going to look at is four and three fifths uh, and two fifths. In the number four and three-fifths, I have four holes, and I've displayed them with four whole things filled in here. They're each cut into five pieces, because I am dealing with fifth size pieces, so I need to cut each of my holes into five. So all I did was go through and make four holes, cut each of them into four pieces, uh, or five pieces, excuse me, and fill them in. And then also, I have to think about my three-fifths, so I put my three-fifths over here. I drew three-fifths, five pieces, three filled in. So now my goal here is to figure out how many fifths 
do I have all together to change it into an improper fraction? How many fifths do I have? So in this one I have one, two, three, four, five. And here I have one, two, three, four, five. I've got another five there, and I've got another five there. Okay. Now I also have to keep track of my three fifths, extra three fifths over here, which I have one, two, three. Now if I count up all of the fifths that I have all together, I've got 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 plus 3 is 23. So my answer to changing this mixed number to an improper fraction is going to be 23 fifths. Now if I come over here to the other side and I'm going to do an improper fraction back to a mixed number. My goal for this one is to figure out how many groups of 5 can I make. Because everybody should know that if we're dealing with fifths, every five fifths we have is a whole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make groups of five to see how many I can make here. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to be one whole. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to be two holes. And by the way, I just drew 23 of these lines because I have 23 fifths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that would have been 3, and that's 4, and then if you notice I've got 3 extra ones left over. I'm not going to be able to circle those 3 um, because I need 5 to make a hole. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 holes. So my big number in my mixed number is going to be a 4, and then my bottom number is just going to stay the same because I'm making groups of 5. And now if I have any left over, it goes up here, and I do, I have three left over. So I have four and three-fifths. That's how four and three-fifths is equal to 23-fifths. All right, for this next one, I'm going to show you how to go back and forth from these here, but then I'm going to show you kind of a shorter way to think about this. Uh, so for starters, I have my three holes here, and I have them cut into four size pieces or four pieces each. I filled them all in because they're holes. One, two, three. Now my two fourths is over here. Uh, one, two. So again, my question is, how many fourths, because I'm dealing with fourth side size pieces, how many fourths do I have all together? So I have one, two, three, four here, four here, and four here. Okay, that would be 12, and then 13 and 14. So my answer here would be 14 fourths. Now the easy way to do this is, I like to take the whole number and multiply it by the denominator. Okay, So for instance, 3 times 4. And if you think about why this works, I've got three holes here, and they're each cut into four pieces. 4, 8, 12. So 3 times 4 is 12. And then all I really need to do is, add on the extra that I have. And I've got two extra ones right here, which is just adding the top number, my two extra ones. So then I just do 12 plus 2, and I get 14. That goes on top. My denominator stays the same. So again, if you just multiply the whole number times the denominator, that represents three groups, or three holes, with four in each one. Then if I just add on the numerator, uh, that would give me my answer of how many fourths I have, which is 14. Now if I come over here, uh, I've got my, my 14 lines drawn out here. I need to make groups of four. Every four that I have will make a whole. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I only have two here, okay, so I can't make another whole. One, two, three three holes with two left over. And I always keep my bottom number. Now if you want an easy way to do this without drawing all the lines, all I do is do a division problem. I take my 14 and what I'm doing is I'm making groups of four. Okay, which is what we're doing down here. We're making groups of four. Every four group of four I can make is a whole. So four goes into 14 three times. Three times four is 12. If I subtract, I get a remainder of 2 at the end. That's my leftover amount. 
So my whole number, here's the big number that I get in my division problem, and then my remainder is the top number on my fraction, 3 and 2 fourths. So you can draw the lines, you can draw the pictures, it's fine. I'd like you to know how to do that. But we've also got shortcuts for that. Right, here's the last example I'll give you with a picture and showing you the shortcut before you try some of these on your own. Uh, I've got my mixed number here, my improper fraction here, and I'm showing you that both of these things are the exact same thing. 5 and 2 tenths and 52 tenths are the same thing. Uh, I've kind of shortened my picture down over here a little bit. Basically what I'm doing is I've got my five holes on my mixed number. So I drew um, my five holes right here, and inside of them I put how many pieces would have to be shaded in for it to be one hole. And since we've got our ten on the bottom here, we know that each one of these pieces is cut into ten, and I would have to have ten out of ten to have a hole. So that would be ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. And then I also have my two tenths, so I just put a little two in this box right here because I have two out of ten. I could go through and shade these all in. I could cut this into ten pieces, shade all of them in. Cut this into ten pieces, shade two of them in, but it takes a long time. So I think this way will work just as well. Uh, so I had 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 52. So how many tenths do I have all together? I've got 52 tenths. Another way to do this, uh, if you're looking for a simpler way to do this, I just take 5 times 10 to start with, okay? Because I know, looking at my picture, that I'm going to have 5 holes, and I'm going to have 10 in each one. Uh, so that would be 50. And then I know my 2 tenths has 2 additional pieces that I'm going to need to put on here. So I'm going to do plus 2, and that's going to give me 52 tenths. Now if I come over here, what I've done is I've drawn 52 lines to represent um, each tenth that I have. I have 52 tenths. And we're trying to make this improper fraction into a mixed number. So we need a whole number, and then we need to know how many pieces would be left over. So in this example, every 10 that I have makes a whole. So I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups of 10. So my whole number is going to be a 5. My bottom number is going to stay the same because I'm keeping groups of 10. Now I just have to count how many are left over. 1, 2, there's 2 left over. So my answer would be 5 and 2 tenths. A faster way to do this is just do a division problem. 52, 10. Uh, 10 goes into 52 5 times. Uh, I know that's 50. So if I subtract, my remainder is going to be 2. So it's five holes with the remainder of two tenths. So my answer is five and two tenths. You can draw the pictures for anything you want to. I'm just telling you up front that some of these are going to be a lot bigger than others. Um, so we're going to have to be able to make those conversions as well. Uh, probably using the shortcuts is easier to do, but until you figure it out, the pictures would be good for you.